Hello again. Welcome back to Mr. Ace Math. This lesson's on experimental probability. It's a little bit different from theoretical probability. Some stuff you should know are basically what theoretical probability is. Ratios, decimals, percents, conversions between decimal percents and fractions, as well as proportions. So make sure you know those and let's get started. So what exactly is experimental probability? Well, it's still the chance or likelihood of a certain event occurring. However, experimental probability is based on the data of experiments performed. And it seems pretty straightforward because it's called experimental probability. So it's based on the data from performing experiments. So let's make sure that we clarify the difference. Theoretical probability and experimental probability. Both probability, a little bit different. Theoretical probability tells us what we can expect to happen based on facts. Experimental probability tells us what actually happened from performing certain experiments. So for example, let's talk about the probability of flipping a coin. So we're still talking about theoretical probability versus experimental probability. Here we have data from flipping a coin. Well, we flip a coin a certain number of times and we land on heads three times and we land on tails seven times because we have five here and two here together that makes seven. So we landed on tails seven times and landed on heads three times. We flipped the coin a total of 10 times. Seven times it landed on tails, three times it landed on heads for a total of 10 times. Well, let's talk about a theoretical probability first. The theoretical probability of landing on heads is equal to one half. Because there's two total sides to a coin, we're basing it on facts. We know a coin has two total sides. One of those sides is heads. So the theoretical probability of landing on heads is one half. But how about experimental probability? We're not going to look at the facts for experimental probability. We're going to look at the data. We're going to look at the information that we were given. We're given the fact that we landed on heads three times. Out of how many times? Ten times. So the probability of landing on heads is 3 out of 10 because it's based on the information of the experiment that we performed of actually flipping a coin. So the probability of heads is 3 tenths. Now, how do these two compare? Before we can compare them, we need to make sure that we have the same denominator. Here we have a denominator of 2. Here we have a denominator of 10. This is saying out of every 2 flips. This is saying out of every 10 flips. So we want to talk about the same thing. So to do that, we make this denominator 10. And when we do that, this becomes 5 over 10. So theoretically, if we flip the coin 10 times, we should land on heads 5 times. We should expect to land on heads 5 times. But does that happen based on our experiment? Well, here, we landed on heads 3 times out of 10 total times. But we expected to get 5. This theoretical tells us what we expect to get. So, did we get more than we expected, less than we expected, or as much as we expected? Well, the theoretical probability is 5 tenths, and the experimental probability is 3 tenths, so we got less than we expected. Because we're expecting, theoretically, based on fact, out of 10 flips to get 5 heads. But we only got 3. Therefore, we got less than expected. Well, how about the theoretical probability of landing on tails versus the experimental probability of landing on tails. Well, the theoretical probability again is one half because out of two total sides, one side is a tail, so one half. Our experimental probability again will be based on the data from this table here. Remember, we flipped the coin a total of 10 times. So the probability of landing on tails out of 10 times is, well what? How many tails did we get from our flips? We landed on tails seven times, so our experimental probability is going to be seven tenths. Now again, before I can compare my theoretical probability to my experimental probability, I have to have the same denominators. That way, we're talking about the same number of flips. So that's going to be again, five over 10. And what does this mean? Out of 10 total flips, we should expect to land on heads around five times. Well, based on our experiment, did that happen? Well, we flipped our coin 10 times, but we ended up landing on tails 7 times. So what do you think? Did we get less than we expected, more than we expected, or as much as we expected? Well, our theoretical probability is 5 tenths, 
Our experimental probability is 7 tenths, so we got more than we expected. Because we expected to land on tails 5 out of 10 times, but we actually landed on tails 7 out of 10 times. So we got more than we expected. How about here? Here we have a number cube. A standard number cube has six sides. And again, we'll talk about the theoretical probability versus the experimental probability. Well, what's the theoretical probability of rolling a one? Well, there's one one on the cube out of six total sides, so that's gonna be one sixth. And how about our experimental probability? Well, the probability of rolling a one here is two. But how many times do we roll the number cube? Well, we have two here, three here, that makes a total of five so far. One more here makes six. We rolled no fours. We've got four more here, that makes 10. And we rolled six twice, that makes a total of 12. So we rolled a one, two out of 12 times. Well, how do our probabilities compare? Remember, we can't compare our theoretical probability to our experimental without having the same denominator. Now, this could have worked one of two ways. I could have reduced this, which is fine, or I could have made this 12, which I'm going to do because I think that's easier. So, let's just make this two out of 12. Now we have the same denominator, so now we can compare. So theoretically, the probability of rolling a one out of 12 times is two. So we should roll a one twice. Well, what happened in our experiment? Well, we rolled the number cube 12 times, and we landed on it twice. So did we get as much as we expected, less than we expected, or more than expected? Well, the theoretical probability is 2 out of 12, and the experimental probability is also 2 out of 12, so we got as much as we expected. Theoretically, we expected to land on 1 twice. And in our experiment, we actually landed on 1 twice. So we got as much as we expected. How about the theoretical probability versus the experimental probability of rolling a 5? Well, what's the theoretical probability of rolling a 5? Well, a standard number cube has 6 total sides, and there's one 5 on it. So the probability of rolling a 5 is 1 6. That's just based on fact. Remember, our experimental probability of rolling a 5 is based on this table here. And remember from before, we rolled a total of 12 times. Well, how many 5s did we roll? We rolled a total of 4 out of 12 times. So, how does our theoretical probability compare to our experimental? Like the last one, I can do this one of a few ways. I could very well reduce this to being 6, but I'm going to leave this alone for now because it's easier to work with bigger numbers. So let's convert our smaller one to our bigger number, 12. So let's change this denominator here to 12. So 6 times 2 is 12. 1 times 2 is 2, so that's going to be... 2 out of 12. That means, theoretically, out of 12 rolls, I should land on 5 twice. Well, based on my experiment, I landed on 5 4 times. So, how does that compare? Our theoretical probability is 2 out of 12. Our experimental probability is 4 out of 12. So, did we get less than we expected, as much as we expected, or more than we expected? Well, remember, our theoretical probability tells us how much to expect. Out of 12, we should expect to get 2. And we actually got 4. So we got more than we expected. This one's a little bit more difficult, but same concept. What's the theoretical probability of rolling an even number? Well, a number cube has 6 total sides. There are 3 even numbers on it, so the probability is 3 sixths. Now, how about the experimental probability of rolling an even number? Well, same thing. There's 2, 4, 6. Those are even numbers. But how many times did I roll them? I rolled the 2 3 times, so that's 3 so far. I rolled no 4s, so I didn't get anything there. And from 6, I got a 2. So I got 3 here and 2 here. That makes 5 out of 12. Again, remember that we got 12 in the denominator because we rolled a total of 12 times. Remember, we can't compare these numbers until they have the same denominator. That means we're talking about the same number of rolls. So let's change this 3 sixths to being out of 12. That's going to be 6 twelfths. So how does that theoretical probability compare to our experimental probability? Theoretically, we should get an even number half of the time, 6 out of 12 times. 
Well, based on our experiment, did that happen? No. We got 5 out of 12 times. So we expected 6 out of 12, but we got 5 out of 12. So is that less, more, or as much as expected? Well, that's less than we expected, because we expected to get 6 based on our theoretical, but we only got 5 based on the experiment that we actually performed. How about the probability of getting a number less than 5? Well, there's 6 numbers on the number cube. There are 4 of them that are less than 5, so that's going to be 4 out of 6. And our experimental probability of rolling a number less than 5 out of 12, because we roll 12 times, is what? How do we find that? Well, we just add the numbers that are less than 5 and how many times we roll them. We rolled a 4 0 times, so we've got 0 so far. How about 3? Well, we rolled one of those. We rolled three twos. So, so far we have one, two, three, four. And we rolled two ones. That makes five and six. So that means our experimental probability is six out of 12. Again, we have to have the same denominators to compare them. So that's going to give us eight out of 12. So our theoretical probability is eight out of 12. Our experimental probability is six out of 12. Well, the theoretical probability tells me that I can expect to get a number less than five eight times. But my experimental probability tells me that that only happened six times. So did I get less, more, or as much as expected? Well, I got less than expected because the theoretical told us to expect eight, but we actually got six. Okay, so so far we've dealt with flipping a coin, we've dealt with rolling a number cube, now we're dealing with selecting marbles from a bag. Let's talk about the theoretical versus the experimental probability of selecting a red marble from the bag. Well, from the bag, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 marbles in the bag, of which 1, 2, 3, 4 are red. So that's going to be 4 out of 14. And that can actually be reduced to two sevens. Now our experimental probability is based on the actual data from selecting a marble. So our colors here are red, blue, and green because it's from the same bag, but we actually selected a red marble seven times, we actually selected a blue marble five times, and we actually selected a green marble eight times. So what's the experimental probability of selecting a red marble? Well we drew a marble how many total times? Well we've got seven here and five here, that makes a total of 12, plus this 8 here, that makes 20. That means out of the 20 times that we drew marbles out of the bag, we drew red 7 times. Therefore, our experimental probability is 7 out of 20. Now, in this situation, it's really annoying because we have denominators that would be a pain to find the LCD. It would take some time. So there's actually an easier way to do it. This denominator here is 7. This denominator here is 20. So it, it takes time to figure out a denominator that works for both of them. So the easiest thing to do is to turn it into a percent. Well, how do we do that? Well, we just take two sevenths and we convert it to a percent. And that's exactly why I said uh, some stuff you should know before the lesson starts is how to convert to percents. Well, two sevenths as a percent is 29%. And 7 over 20 is exactly 35%. So now that both our theoretical probability and our experimental probability are percents, we can just compare the percents directly. Our theoretical probability is 29%. And our experimental probability is 35%. So we're expecting to get a red marble about 29% of the time. But based on our experiment, we got it 35% of the time. So how does that compare? Does that mean that we got more than we expected, less than we expected, or as much as we expected? Well, theoretically, we only get red 29% of the time. But based on our experiment, we got it 35% of the time. Therefore, we got more than we expected. How about the theoretical versus the experimental probability of selecting a marble that is not blue? From this bag, there are 14 marbles. Of the 14 marbles, 7 are not blue, so our theoretical probability is 7 fourteenths. That's actually 1 half. How about the experimental probability of selecting a marble that's not blue? Well, we drew a marble 20 times, 
And even though there's blue five times, that means there's 15 times that it's not blue. Seven of those were red, and eight of those were green. So that makes our experimental probability 15 out of 20. And that can reduce to 3 fourths. Now we could use the same denominator, but I do want to practice using percents. So our theoretical probability for getting a marble that's not blue is 50%. That's one half. And our experimental probability for getting a marble that was not blue is 3 fourths. That's 75%. So how does that compare? Theoretically, we expected to get a, a marble that was not blue 50% of the time. But based on our experiment, we actually got a marble that wasn't blue 75% of the time. Therefore, we got more than we expected. Because theoretically, we were planning on getting a marble that wasn't blue 50% of the time. But based on our experiment, we actually got a marble that wasn't blue 75% of the time. Therefore, we got more than expected. So here's your pause and practice. Just pause and practice. When you're done, unpause the video. After a 3, 2, 1 countdown, your answer will be displayed. Go. So let's go over our answers. We had to do three things. We had to A. Determine what the theoretical probability was as a percent. B. Determine the experimental probability as a percent. And C. State if the outcome occurred was more than expected, less than expected, or as much as expected. So number one is 20%, 8%, less than expected. Number two, 20%, 32%, more than expected. Number three, 80%, 80%, as much as expected. Number four, 40%, 40%, as much as expected. And number five, 60%, 72%, more than expected. So let's review. The chances or likelihood of a certain event occurring is called the probability. Probability based on past experiments or data from those experiments is called experimental probability. The type of probability that allows us to make predictions based on general knowledge is called Theoretical probability. Remember, theoretical probability tells us what we can expect to happen. If the experimental probability is greater than the theoretical probability, then the outcome occurred is greater than expected. If the experimental probability is less than the theoretical probability, then the outcome occurred less than expected. And when comparing probabilities with a denominator that is difficult to find the LCD, the best thing to do is Convert all probabilities to percents. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for using Mr. Ace Math. Don't just pass math, ace it.